action plan to combat sorcery killings. Partnership agreement signed between PNG and Australia. And Medang District's funds in the spotlight. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thank you for joining me with Friday's news. A joint exercise by security personnel and Immigration and Citizenship Services Authority saw the voluntary transfer of 60 more asylum seekers out of Lombrum. This comes after food, water and electricity services into the decommissioned centre remain shut. On Tuesday, the Supreme Court refused their application to seek interim orders to restore those services. The same afternoon, 24 asylum seekers vacated Lombrum with their belongings. On Wednesday, 14 more left for East Larangau. There are now close to 200 refugees living at the new sites. Manus police and naval officers from Lombrum are facilitating the transferals. Authorities on the ground say a larger number is expected to vacate the centre tomorrow. There needs to be a collective effort by all levels of society to address sorcery. According to Justice Minister and Attorney General David Stephen, given the recent increase in sorcery-related killings, the government has now developed an action plan to address this pressing issue. A large part of this plan involves more awareness at the leadership level, beginning with members of parliament. In the last few weeks, instances of sorcery-related violence have been reported in the media. In several cases, people have been murdered on the belief that they were practicing sorcery. In light of this disturbing trend, Justice Minister and Attorney General David Stephen has weighed in on the issue, announcing the government's moves in developing a national action plan to address sorcery. A main part of this plan deals with awareness on sorcery, which, according to Minister Stephen, needs to be driven from the leadership level. The awareness also needs to be driven at the leadership level. Um, provincial governments and elected members need to take ownership of this issue and, um, and to, to make sure that it's, it's part, of our, uh, part of the challenge that we, we need to deliberately confront today. While efforts had been made by the legislature in dealing with sorcery, among these efforts, the repeal of the Sorcery Act, Minister Stephen says while laws can be passed by Parliament, enforcing relevant laws also have their own unique challenges. Um, we can pass so many laws, but laws alone won't change anything. It's acceptance in society and we, our, our history shows us in this country enforcing laws can be very difficult. Um, so awareness, educational awareness is, is key, but political will uh, to make sure that these issues are addressed. The Department of Justice and Attorney General will play a key role in the National Action Plan. According to DJAG Secretary Dr. Lawrence Kalinoy, the National Action Plan can be successful if all stakeholders work together in dealing with instances of suspected sorcery cases. The National Action Plan is for that sort of um, organized uh, overall national response on the part of hospitals, on the part of police, on the part of social workers, um, leaders. leaders to say where there is a death, we quickly take the person to the hospital and have that person um, autopsy done and we find a scientific cause, a medical reason as to why and how the person died. Dealing with sorcery related violence will not be easy but Minister Stephen is hopeful that at least some progress can be made to prevent further instances of sorcery-related violence. For me, it was disappointing uh, early this year when, when I saw the, this recurrence of this issue or this matter of witchcraft-related killings. Uh, after so much has been uh, put in, after so much work has been put in, so it, there is a need uh, for, for us uh, to, to drive this uh, uh, forward and I make a commitment uh, on behalf of government to, to ensure that this action plan is, is, is followed through. Meribatulo, National MTV News. 
A partnership agreement signed between PNG and Australia governments will better enable implementation of policies and reforms to improve the government system. This agreement was signed yesterday by the Minister of Community Development, Soro Eoe, and Australian High Commissioner, Bruce Davis. The agreement is to provide support to ensure the policy decentralised service delivery are well developed and well understood. Minister Eoe highlighted that a key focus of the policy is on protection and empowerment of family units and communities. The signing marks the Community Development Minister as the third minister to sign the partnership agreement for improved decentralization and service delivery between the two governments. Trevor Maori, Acting Secretary of Department of Defense, has been referred to the public prosecutor for alleged misconduct in office. The Ombudsman Commission referred Mr. Maori today after conducting investigations into allegations against Mr. Maori. In a statement today, the Commission said it found there is a prima facie case against Mr. Maori and as required by Section 20, Subsection 2 of the Organic Law on the duties and responsibilities of leadership, they have notified Mr. Maori of its intention to refer the matter to the public prosecutor. As such, the Commission has decided to refer Mr. Maori to the public prosecutor for independent deliberation. The public prosecutor now has the discretion bring or decline proceedings under the Leadership Code for Alleged Misconduct in Office. In accordance with Section 177, Subsection 1B of the Constitution. A hit and run in by a PMV bus this morning has caused bystanders and the public to attack another bus. The car accident occurred at the Arima flyover traffic light where a bus 15 hit a 12-year-old boy from Tari. This aggravated onlookers who turned on another bus who was travelling en route from Nine Mile. The boy was rushed to the Port Mosby General Hospital for immediate medical attention. Meanwhile, another motor vehicle accident occurred at the Vision City traffic lights. There were no casualties reported, only minor injuries sustained by a taxi driver who was saved by the vehicle's airbag. National MTV News will be back with more after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. The Planning and Monitoring Unit of the Medang Provincial Administration have discovered that districts have misappropriated funds allocated to them. Police Planning and Monitoring Unit Director Simon Simoy says districts were spending money in the wrong areas. But this may be due to a lack of understanding at the district level on how they are supposed to expand their funds. The report was presented during a four-day workshop facilitated by the provincial administration. The workshop is to undertake a performance analysis and review on service delivery in the province as a mandated administration. District administrators, LLG executive officers, sector heads, including all members of the six districts, were part of the workshop. The workshop looked at a review of service delivery performances. It also looks at third quarter budget review and to set phase for the 2018 development budget. Reveal gaps and uh, uh, areas that we need to address in our third quarter review uh, and also uh, to pick up uh, areas that we need to take on in the review together with the uh, other agendas that are floating around f to shape the 2018 budget. So yes, the, we intend to achieve, to, firstly to, to know where we are, what we've achieved in our uh, 2017 deliverables and then reshape through our fiscal arrangement how we can progress it through and then link it up to 2018 budget. Yes. The gathering is only looking at the rollover expenditure for 2016. Mr. Simoy explains for this year there is nothing they can report on. Given that to date, very little grants have trickled down from the 2017 national budget. 
This means that they are only looking at performances of the 2016 rollovers that they are delivering in 2017. So we are really looking at uh, the performance of our 2016 rollovers, yes. The expenditures analysis undertaken by the monitoring interventions was able to identify issues, gaps and areas of misspending. The monitoring team showed a lot of misappropriation of funds by the district's rollover expenditures. But Mr. Simoy believes this may be due to the lack of understanding at the district level. This, he says, a few discrepancies that they are trying to get it right during the workshop. We probably think that, you know, okay, the money is given to us, now we, we can spend any way we, we want to. But this is something that we need to get uh, uh, doctrinated into them. And this is what we're doing. So, yeah. Masa Luis, a, National a, MTV News, Medang. Lay's new fish market is expected to boost the local fishing economy, attracting more fishermen to sell their catch in Lay's main market. The 1.5 million kina project was officially launched today by the National Minister for Fisheries and Kabum MP Patrick Bassa. It was funded through the National Fisheries Authority and the Overseas Fisheries Corporation Foundation. Fisheries Minister Patrick Bassa was accompanied by officials from the provincial government and the National Fisheries Authority to launch Lay's new fish market. We now officially uh, declaring the fish market for Lay City, uh, community of Lay, Morobe province and officially open. The 1.5 million kina project was funded through the NFA and the Overseas Fishery Corporation Foundation. Those fishing companies that we give access to fish in our waters, uh, as one of those uh, uh, partnerships that we have, we, we basically embarked on building smaller markets and this is one of the examples of that. The fish market facility has a sorting area and is installed with an ice making machine and a blast and storage freezer. It's a blast freezer is holding more than 500 kilos per nine hours long. And it's strong, I put it in a and I put it in a storage freezer. So storage freezer is holding more than five ton to ten ton of storage freezer. It's holding more fresh fish. New general market sheds were also open today. It's not looking at fisheries only, but it's looking at a wider providing a facility where everybody will come and sell their, sell their goods to earn an income. The facilities will be managed by the NFA, Morobe Fisheries and the Lay City Authority. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Lay. The member for Lay, John Rosso, has warned the students of Bumayong Secondary School in Lay to stop taking part in school fights. He said Lay District would only assist the school if the students change their behaviour and act like students serious about education. Bumayong Secondary School is one of several schools known for participating in school fights. The school graduated more than 300 grade 12 students today. The grade 9 students... Bumayong Lutheran Secondary School in Lay graduated 309 grade 12 students today. For some of these students, it was not easy to graduate today because of many problems in the school, especially school fights. Lay MP John Rosso, who was also present at the graduation, warned the students to change attitude for the betterment for the school. All those things cannot be solved by the parents, can't be solved by the school board, can't be solved by the teachers. It boils down to being solved by you, the children yourselves. You play it, the young adults. You are the only people who will solve this. All man said, Karim police can fix him, Karim army, Karim politician, Karim kind kind man can fix him. You play no pig dog, you play man. Yeah. Now you play it, you play ting ting man, Mary you play your senis, and you play senis, and now you play graduate. Yeah. This year, there were a lot of disturbances in the school which disrupted the school's academic and administration operations. In September this year, thieves broke into the school and stole 26 computers, three laptops, and more than 1,000 kina was taken from the school's canteen. School principal Saya Daniels says police have yet to make arrest. Mr. Daniels said the delay of tuition fee-free funds has also affected the operation of the school.
The lateness and the in the release of funds has crippled the school's operation in many ways. The school's head boy Michael Buliao thanked his fellow students for making the graduation happen and called on the grades 9 and 11 students to stay away from school fights. To the upcoming grade 10s and 12s, this is the way to go forward. As you can see today, they have come up togetherness and working together, it happened finally. Mr. Rosso also called on the students of Bumayong Secondary to behave as students should in order to receive government support. But let me tell you, I will not assist you guys. Suppose me RM school fight is still continue lo here. School fight lo here, but me divert money blow me go up lab. You plus stop him school fight, but you plus look at me album you plus. You plus work him school fight, he got nap school no sir fight, but me get money lol. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. And now looking at our finance news, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.3115 US dollars in the interbank markets. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.304 US dollars, 0.392 Australian dollars, 0.2574 Euro and 34.13 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, Coffee and copra closed higher, while gold and cocoa closed the day lower. Palm oil closed unchanged, while crude oil and copper closed the day lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 101.42 points lower, the ASX closed at 20.05 points lower, and the All Ordinaries closed at 18.14 points lower. Stories making headlines overseas when we return. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. Turning overseas, U.S. President Donald Trump has made a U-turn on his relationship with China. He doesn't blame the country for taking advantage of America, despite repeatedly slamming the Chinese in his election campaign. He's visiting Beijing as part of his tour of Asia and is pushing $250 billion in business deals. A red carpet welcome for President Trump here in China. This stop could be the most critical of this Asia tour. President Trump facing complex challenges on trade and North Korea's nuclear program. But before getting down to business, it was time for socializing. President Xi and his wife playing tour guide, showing President Trump and the First Lady Beijing's Forbidden City, treating them to a traditional Chinese opera and dinner. President Trump has said he and President Xi have an excellent relationship. This visit will be a big test of whether he can leverage that. Earlier today in Seoul, President Trump speaking before the South Korean legislature, but talking directly to Kim Jong-un, telling the North Korean dictator, do not underestimate and do not try the United States. The weapons you are acquiring are not making you safer. They are putting your regime in grave danger. Every step you take down this dark path increases the peril you face. The president saying there's a path to a better future for North Korea, but Kim Jong-un must do three things. End the aggression of his regime, stop the development of ballistic missiles, and a complete, total, and verifiable denuclearization. All week, President Trump has been putting public pressure on China to do more to isolate the North Korean regime. He said this week that President Xi has been helpful, but how helpful is still to be seen. Residents of North Korea have been lashing out at the U.S. following stinging comments made by President Donald Trump likening life in North Korea to hell. In North Korea, where the news is under strict government control, state media gave only a brief mention of President Trump's speech at the South Korean National Assembly. No details of his scathing indictment of North Korean human rights and harsh words for their supreme leader, Kim Jong-un. North Korea is not the paradise your grandfather envisioned. It is a hell that no person deserves. Despite heavy restrictions on the flow of information, our government guides allow us to tell Pyongyang citizens exactly what Trump said. 
That's absurd, says housewife Ri Yong-hee. The reality here is very different. We're leading a happy life, and we enjoy exclusive rights. When you say you have rights that people don't have outside of North Korea, what do you mean by that? One example is our outstanding leader, Marshal Kim Jong-un. She says he's leading us to a better future. Trump has no place to talk about human rights. He's a simple war maniac. Her answer echoes North Korea's leading newspaper, which called President Trump's words, quote, warmongering, filthy rhetoric spewing out of his snout like garbage that reeks of gunpowder to ignite war. Ri Won Gil is an editor at a publishing company. I asked him about President Trump's claim that North Korea is a failed state where most live in poverty, drawing a stark contrast to their neighbors in the South. Why do you think that South Korea's economy is so much larger than North Korea's? Do you agree with President Trump that it's your government's policies that are to blame? He knows nothing at all about this part of the country, he says. Here we have free education, housing, medical care. Ri was raised an orphan. His parents died serving the government. Now he has a cushy job in the showpiece capital. The United Nations says most North Koreans live without regular electricity, clean water, and nutritious food. What about people who don't live here in Pyongyang, people who live out in the countryside? Oh. We're building our economy, even under the sanctions and economic blockade by the Americans, he says. And even in Western countries, there's a big difference between life in the capital and small towns. On 17 trips to North Korea, I've never heard anyone criticize the government. There is zero tolerance for dissent of any kind. Defectors testifying to the UN often paint a much darker picture of life inside North Korea. But here, no deviation from the party line. They say this country is not hell, it's home. In New Zealand, the juries began deliberation at the High Court trial in Christchurch of a babysitter who's accused of murdering a one-year-old girl. Baby Anya Chang died in January 2015 after suffering toe skull fractures, internal bleeding and facial bruises whilst in the care of 22-year-old Shair Sami. The defendant took the girl to the hospital, alleging she'd fallen from the couch she was sleeping on. Deliberations at the High Court trial in Christchurch of a babysitter who's accused of murdering a one-year-old girl. Baby Alia Chand died in January 2015 after suffering two skull fractures, internal bleeding and severe facial bruising, whilst in the care of 22-year-old Shayal Sami. The defendant took the girl to hospital, alleging she had fallen from a couch she was sleeping on. But the Crown argues her injuries were not accidental. There are sayings which define beliefs only witnessed by a limited few from deep below the sea. And the pictures are about to hit our screens in the brand new Blue Planet 2. The legendary Sir David Attenborough once again takes us deep, deep inside what makes our planet so blue. The wonders of the deep. Blue Planet 2 introduces viewers to a world of underwater as yet undiscovered. It tells of strange phenomena such as underwater volcanoes, intelligent fish, and shows us what truly lies beneath. It's surveying the oceans, looking at the wonders and the dramas and the excitements and the beauties, but also the dangers. Cameras spent more than 6,000 hours underwater, 1,000 of those in submarines to capture the extraordinary images in the waters of 39 countries. We've been all over the world uh, just trying to capture the, you know, the best moments we can. Blue Planet 2 boasts a stellar cast, not just Sir David, but the show's music is written by Oscar award-winning Hans Zimmer, a man who scored dozens of Hollywood blockbusters, including The Lion King. I feel I need to support Sir David in helping us to understand what's going on and then ultimately, hopefully, making a bit of a difference that can make our planet a better place for all creatures. A difference? Sir David, at 91, shows no sign of stopping. So you've had a pretty amazing career, uh, obviously 
you know, spanning seven decades. What do you think your highlight has been? In my life? Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. But I, but I certainly, and I'm not saying it just because of where we are and what we're talking about, but uh, certainly the, one of the highlights of my life as a naturalist was the first time I put on scuba gear and dived on a coral reef. The first time you dive on a coral reef is mind-blowing. So you see this multitude of wonderfully beautiful, complex things all swimming together. Beautiful. But that's at threat. The coral bleaching occurred while the show was filming, prompting the series to address some of the real issues facing the oceans. Telling stories of Arctic mammals who can't find enough food or ice for their young to rest on due to rising sea temperatures. Of pollution and sending us a message. Only that we depend upon the sea. Uh, only that we are destroying and poisoning the sea. Only that we ought to care for the sea if we care about the human race, apart from anything else. And back home, another five winners have been announced for the Telecom Festive Season Cash Giveaway promotion today. The winners will be walking away with 1,000 kina each. They were picked from an electronic system by Telecom CFO Jesse Ramo and other representatives of the company. Telecom announced five more winners in their festive season cash giveaway promotion this morning at their head office in Waigani. The winners were picked by an electronic system by Chief Financial Officer Jesse Ramo, who is acting in place of CEO Xavier Victor while he is away in Kimbe. It's a way of rewarding our customers, valued customers throughout this country who are loyal to Telecom. Uh, so we will do the second draw for five uh, people who will be able to win 1,000 kinates. Of the five who were drawn today, two were numbers from Telecom's mobile 4G LTE service and three were fixed landline service numbers. Regional business manager John Ovia explained that the Christmas cash giveaway promotion is not limited to only Telecom mobile users, but also open to ADSL or fixed landline customers and internet users on WiMAX. By topping up 20 kina right prepaid or more, your mobile or landline number automatically goes into the draw to win 1,000 kina at the end of the week. Telecom has 90,000 kina worth of prize money yet to be given away. So head on down to your nearest shop and purchase a 20 kina right prepaid or top up from your nearest BSP ATM and you may just get lucky. Five winners will be drawn weekly for the next 20 weeks. Promotion ends in February 2018. Chukai Sports is next. Stay tuned for details. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. Former Kumuls players will parade the Oil Search National Football Stadium before the Kumuls and Hawks match on Sunday. PNG RFL chairman Sandy Saka says this is to honour past heroes for the foundations they set, leading to the success and recognition we enjoy today. Only Port Mosby-based former Kumuls will attend. There is about 30 ex kumuls in the city and nearby central province. The parade was organized by Mark Mom and a meeting was arranged with the PNG RFL CEO Reata Rao in September to make this happen. First Kumuls captain and Kumul number one Paul Chue will lead the parade. Chue led the first ever Kumuls team against Great Britain in 1975. PNG RFL has asked all ex Kumuls to gather at the PNG RFL headquarters tomorrow for a briefing. The PNG RFL chairman thanked the 2017 Rugby League World Cup committee in Port Mosby, headed by Tasman Samuel, for allowing this special location to be held before the third Pool C game between the PNG LNG Kumuls and the USA Hawks. Elijah Levette, National MTV Sports. The United States Rugby League team visited the Gordon International School today. They were greeted to excited students waiting in front of the school gates. 
The team was in awe when they entered the school gates as students cheered them on. They were escorted into the assembly hall where a loud roar erupted from the students waiting there. Team USA was surprised by the support shown from the school as they took photos and videos of the The team was then officially welcomed by the deputy principal. The students sang Yankee Doodle entertaining the players in what they supposed was their USA's favorite song. The players then introduced themselves to the school. It was obvious their favorite player was US winger Matwain Johnson. They were then taken to the playing field where children had the opportunity to take pictures and autographs. The school wished the team all the best in their match this weekend against the Kumuls at the Oil Search National Football Stadium. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. The Rugby League World Cup 2017 this week extended the tournament's global reach to almost 150 countries, allowing a potential audience of more than 160 million viewers with the addition of Canada, Uruguay and Chile. The newest broadcast partner is Flow Rugby, a new site that will offer fans live and on-demand coverage of the third and final pool stage matches this weekend. Chukai Sports continues after the break. Stay tuned. Chukai Sports. To snooker, the current PNG women's snooker champion Hane Vayeke and fellow Hanobaden Mevare are the two women among 32 players taking part in the 2017 Port Moresby Snooker Handicap Challenge, which commenced on Tuesday. The finals will be held at the Lamana Q Club this Saturday. Hane Vaike with a handicap of plus 25 is in Group G with both Marcus Raman and Emmanuel Kapi on 10 points and Andrew Taka 40. The venue is at Aviate Club. In Group H, Fred Ramos, Timothy Barrera, Lasaka Joseph and Gamu Miria. Defending champion Richard Barrio with handicap of plus 15 is in Group F. The match is at Laguna Hotel. His opponents in this group are Willy Vaike with a zero handicap. Willie Tiki Tethi and Daniel Els with a handicap of 15. Group E also at Laguna Hotel has top players in Noel Ramos and Ralph Kaina, along with Oscar Pomalio and Charlie Linda. All other groups are at Lamana Q Club with Group A consisting Kamatan Sibunakao, Charlie Tom, George Ramins and Rokas Missin. Group B players include tournament director Joey Chan, Warren Guy, Clyde Palmer and others. Meanwhile, May Vare with the handicap of 30 is in Group C, along with Gus Cruz, Kelly Yambi and Toa Simoy. While all eyes will be on Group D when Pom BSA President John Chan faces Willy Vaike, Arana Taviri and Toka Owen. All group matches will be played over the best of three frames and all season starts at 6pm. This weekend, the semi-finals over the best of five frames will start at 11 a.m. and again at Lamana Q Club and at 3 p.m. the grand final over the best of seven frames. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. An open boxing training session will be held tomorrow and Monday for interested boxers within NCD and Central. The coaching session will be facilitated by professional New South Wales boxer Peter Morrison at the Tarama Aquatic Indoor Centre. Peter, who was officially invited to PNG to assist Team USA for this weekend's match against the Kumuls, will run the training session to focus on the more technical aspects of boxing. Interested boxers are encouraged to attend the session and gain in-depth knowledge on boxing techniques while seizing this opportunity to get first-hand information from one of the best. And that ends Chukai Sports. The weather details up next. Chukai Sports. True Kai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux.
Taking a look at the weather forecast for tonight, in the southern region, thundery showers in Port Mosby, Daru, Kerma and Popendeta and showers in Alatal. In the Mamase region, showers in Lei and Medeng, brief showers in Wewak and a shower or two in Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, few showers in Lorengau, showers in Kaviang and thundery showers in Kokopo, Rabaul, Kimbe and Buka. And in the Highlands region, evening showers then morning fog in all centres. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. And that's been the news, sports and weather for Friday the 10th of November 2017. From the entire news team, have a safe weekend, pleasant viewing, good night.